If you stop feeding your dog from a food bowl, you can help them calm down and stop barking, biting, and jumping so much. All you need to do is change how you feed them. I've been feeding my dog using these other methods for years now, and he's more relaxed and content because of them. Not to mention, he absolutely loves mealtime. Now the first alternative way of feeding your dog is in a puzzle toy. Here's the thing. Most dogs were bred for a specific purpose, and that purpose was not to sit at home all day doing nothing. When your dog doesn't have a purpose or a job to do, they get bored. And we all know what happens when you have a bored pup. They start barking, chewing, jumping, or biting more. But puzzle toys are great for dogs because they have to work to get their food. They chew, roll, or lick the toy for their reward, so it's a great mental workout for them. But that's not even the best part. Many dogs eat their food way too fast, and that can cause tummy problems. But if you're feeding your dog in a puzzle toy, there's no way for them to eat too fast because it takes time to get the food out. Now I know you might not want to go spend your hard-earned money on new dog toys without knowing if they'll actually work. So before I give you my dog's favorite puzzle toys from all the ones that we've tested, here's how you can make DIY puzzle toys for free. The easiest one is the towel treat. The only two items you need are a towel and your dog's food. The simplest way to make this toy is to just put the kibble in the center of the towel and fold it over. If you have a young puppy or you're just getting your dog started with puzzle toys, this is a great place to start. Once your dog has mastered this, it's time for treat level two. This is where you put the kibble and the towel, but this time you tightly roll it up into a breakfast burrito. This one is a little harder for your dog to find the food, but still pretty easy. Now if your dog is a black belt level towel treater, this next one is for you. First, put the treats in the towel, then roll it up long ways, and then tie it in a knot. Your dog will have to figure out how to untie the knot and open the towel up to get their food. It's not for every dog, and it may take your dog a bit of time to realize that they need to unwrap it first and not just bite it. But it's become one of my favorite things to do with my dog. Now if you want to mix it up with the DIY puzzle toys, you've also got the muffin tin game. This is where you put your dog's food in different cups in a muffin tin. Then you put balls or other toys on top of the food in the tin. This will make them exercise their creativity and patience since they have to move their toys out of the tin first before they can gobble up their food. If you want to make this easy for your dog, you can leave a few of the cups unblocked so that they can see that is where the food is. Or, if you want to spice it up for them and make it really fun, you can mix in some treats with your dog's kibble under the balls. Sometimes, I'll even smear some peanut butter at the bottom of one of the muffin tins. There's another fun way to feed your dog dinner without having to buy anything new, but we'll talk about that in a moment. If you want a faster way to feed your dog in a puzzle toy, there are some great toys you can buy for them at the store. Here are some of my dog's favorites. The first one is the Orby Snoop. This is a simple rubber toy that folds in on itself and is kind of like a deep bowl for your dog's kibble, except the food can slide up the sides and play hide and seek from your dog. At first, your dog will probably stick their tongue in the toy to get the food out, but once they've gotten all the easy pieces, that is where the fun begins. They'll roll and flip it around, and you can almost see their brains working to see how to get their food out. It's a great toy, but there are two downsides to the Snoop that the next few toys don't have. First, it's not dishwasher safe. This isn't too big of a deal, since you can just wash it in the sink with soap and water, and if you unfold it, it's pretty open and easy to clean. But I figured I'd at least mention it. And second, it's not that big, so if your pup eats big meals and you're looking to feed them their whole dinner in this thing, then it may not be for you. Next up is the Kong Wobbler. This is the most popular toy in this list by far. But first, here's a quick reminder to subscribe if you want to raise your pup into the best dog they can be. Now the Kong Wobbler is the most challenging for my dog. This takes him the longest time to get his dinner out of, and after it, he's pretty exhausted. I especially like using this toy if he still has a lot of energy from the day left over at dinner time. The only downside about this toy is that it's not always obvious the food is gone when he's finished. The bottom is weighted with sand, and I found him tossing it around, 
hoping to get one last piece when there's actually none left and it breaks my heart. Next, we've got the Not -a Rock. This is actually my favorite dinner time puzzle toy to give my dog. This is a hollow, rock-shaped rubber toy that your dog will love throwing and rolling around to get their food out. It's hard enough to make it fun and challenging, but it's not too hard that my dog gets frustrated, which sometimes happens with the Kong Wobbler. Plus, it's a lot lighter and easier for my dog to grab and throw around, which is another advantage it has over the Wobbler. I'll drop links in the description for where you can get all of these puzzle toys. Now your dog will love eating their meals at Puzzle Toys, and they'll be left feeling satisfied that they worked hard and earned their meal. But if you have a puppy, or if your dog is a little on the heavy side, then here's another option, feeding them as you're training them. Feeding them through training is a great way to get consistent training in without getting them extra calories. Plus, feeding and training your dog is a great way to build a bond with them, because you're doing three of their favorite things at once quality time with you, working, and their most favorite thing, food. You can train them during mealtime on the basic commands, like sit, down, and come. Or you can teach them fun tricks, like spin and shake. But you're not only stuck with, quote, formal training. There are some fun training games you can play with them too. One of my favorites to play with young puppies is Treat Toss, which combines both exercise and recall training. You can play this game by tossing a piece of kibble across the room so your puppy has to chase it, then showing them a piece of kibble in your hand so they come running back to you. They'll get some exercise and playtime in while also learning that it's fun to run toward you. If you have a partner, you can take turns calling your dog to you in your house or your yard and giving them a few bites of kibble every time they come. Our dog's name is Oliver, and we call this game Oliver Tennis. To spice this game up, we sometimes ask him to do a trick or a command when he comes to us. Both of these games are great because they practice the most important command, getting your dog to come to you when you ask. Now I probably wouldn't feed my puppy their whole meal through playing treat toss because it requires a lot of running and I'm not trying to get them sick. I'd probably mix in a puzzle toy or this next alternative way of feeding them. If breakfast or dinner time isn't a good time for you to train them, or if you're short on time, then here's another way to feed them, through a scavenger hunt. This is kind of like the lazy person's puzzle toy. You're still making your dog use their brain and nose to find their food, but you're not hiding the food in a toy. You're just hiding it around your house. Like the towel treat, it may take a bit of time getting used to. So if I were you, I'd start things slow. Make the hiding places obvious at first, or give them a trail to follow. But as they get more practice in, they'll soon be master food finders and you can increase the difficulty. And if you're really short on time, even just scattering their food across the ground is fun for them. They'll love using their nose to find food, and this is an easy way to let them do it. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.